Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. The weather has started changing. It's time to get our winter beater ready for the road. Now this is our super cheap low mile 2003 Grand Am GT we started a while back. Link's up there if you forgot that I had it or don't know what I'm talking about. But there were a few things that we didn't do the last time when we rebuilt it. So we're going to finish those up. And then we got some of the typical Grand Am repairs to do. We got a curling dash to take care of. We got intake gaskets that are probably going to start leaking in the next few seconds because, well, it's a Grand Am. And we got some brakes to put on it because it has been sitting for a while. So we're going to get all that stuff done and get it ready for the snow. Let's get started. So we'll start by removing the steering wheel and airbag. To do that, we're going to have to pull the top cover off the steering column and rotate the steering wheel 90 degrees, right or left. That allows us access to the bolts for the airbag. Break them loose and spin them out. I'll rotate the steering wheel the other way. Get to the other bolt. Break it loose. Now we can disconnect it all. And the horn wires. We gotta get those retainers out that we just unscrewed. And put them back in the airbag. So it's ready to go back in the car later. Later on it just snaps in. We don't have to tighten them back up. I can unbolt the steering wheel. Screw the nut back on just a little bit. I'll have to get our steering wheel removal tool. Pull out on the steering wheel a little bit. Give it a tap with the air chisel. I'll fish our wires back through. That's why I put the nut on a couple threads. Because when it goes flying violently, it likes to take the wires with. So now we can move on to our console. A little cover up on the front with a 7mm behind it. Take that out. Move the cover around the gear shift. Pull the boot down. Slide the hidden clip out and lose it inside the console. We'll get that later. A couple of screws inside the cup holder. Pull the bezel off around the radio and HVAC controls. Unplug it off. Toss in the back seat. And pull our cup holder out. Toss that in the back seat. There's a couple of nuts behind that. Loosen them up and spin them off. Now we'll get the bolt that's up in the front on the other side. There's two more bolts in the bottom of the console. Unbolt those. Pull the boot over the e-brake handle. I have to pull off the sides of the console. The older ones had screws in them. After 2002, they started just putting the little Christmas trees in. So you just pull out on them. A lot easier this way. Lift the console out. Now you can find that clip we dropped. Pull the side cover off. Disconnect the airbag. And unbolt the glove box, unplug it, unbolt the bottom of the dash, pull the hush panel off, now we can unbolt the airbag, pop it out of there, push the wires out, unbolt the side of the dash, and unbolt the wiring harness, unplug it. Pull the A-pillar trim off, put a screwdriver in there, give it one good hit. Otherwise, you just try pulling them off, you break the tabs every time. It took me a while to figure that out. Now you can pull the bezel off around the instrument cluster. There's two screws up in the top. Pull the turn signal switch out. It's just one screw in the top and it lifts up. Unplug it. Now we can get to the two bolts that are behind it for the instrument cluster bezel. Unbolt those. Toss that in the back seat. Now we're going to bolt the instrument cluster, slide it out of there, 
side with the wire comes out first. Plug the wires, toss that in the back seat. There's a couple of bolts behind it. One screw those. Now we have to remove the tilt lever. The older styles before 04 have a tab you have to push and you slide it out of there. Then we unbolt the ignition lock and the radio and HVAC units. Take all that stuff off and throw it in the back seat. Unbolt the side of the dash. Unbolt our wiring harness and snap that off. Now we can unbolt the hush panels from underneath the driver's side. Pull out the fog light switch and dimmer switch. Unplug it. Toss that in the back seat. Now remove the defroster vents. There's a couple bolts up there. Pull them out. Pull our A-pillar trim off the driver's side. And our dash is free. Slide it over the steering column. Get it snagged on all the wires as you try to take it out. And set it off to the side. It's not heavy at all. Oddly shaped. But not heavy. This dash is pretty bad. It's not just up on the top. It's curling down on the knee bolster area. It's pulling away above the gauges and all across the top. So the best thing we can do to fix it permanently is just replace it. I guess it's not permanent because this one will eventually do the same thing. But this was in nice shape. You can see how it's supposed to look there. What happens is this outer material just starts to shrink and then pull away. So we're going to throw this new one in. Came out of another car. It was rusty, but it had a good dash. So now we're going to put our donor dash in. Slide it in there and set it down on the seats. We'll go on the other side. Sit down so we can maneuver it a little better. Slide it over the steering column. Fish all the wires that are going to try to get stuck where they don't belong. Some might be successful, but they'll come out eventually. Bolt in the top of it, bolt in the side, plug our harness back in, tighten it up. Fish the airbag wire in there, set the airbag down, plug the airbag in, bolt the airbag in, put our A-pillar trim on. using our trim installation tool. Put our side cover back on. Bolt the ignition lock back in. One bolt behind the radio. Bolt that in. Now you can plug the radio in. Slide that in. Bolt it in. Now I'll put the HVAC controls in. Sounds like a maraca. Part of a broken knob. Just grand damn things. Now we plug the HVAC controls in. Got a couple vacuum lines and a couple wires on there. Plug in our fog light and dimmer switch, snap it in. 
put the bolts behind the instrument cluster. Oh, Mr. Spotty. I don't want to be accused of leaving a man behind. Plug in our cluster. Side with the wires goes in last. Bolt the cluster in. Yeah, slide the bezel in. Put the screws in the top. Push the bezel in as you tighten it up. Otherwise, sometimes it'll leave a gap up at the top. Bolt the bottom of the bezel in. I can bolt the side of the dash in. Plug in our harness. Bolt that in. Put our cover back on. Put the bottom shroud on the steering column. Line up the tabs and bolt it in. Put our tilt lever back in. Just slides in. I'll put our turn signal switch in. Plug it in. Push it down. Make sure you push the horn button in as you push it down. Otherwise, it'll destroy the cancel cam and the horn will be going off at random times or not at all. Now you put the top cover on the steering column just snaps in and I'll put the steering wheel back on feed the wires through it's notched only goes in one position slide it on tighten it up plug in our cruise switches plug in our horn and our airbag clip the wires into the back of the airbag and snap our airbag in with our airbag installation tool now we put the console back in Slide it down, put the boot over the e-brake, slide it forward onto the studs and underneath the cup holder, put our little Christmas trees in the side, put our nuts back on those studs, put our cup holder back in, snap it down into place. Put our screws back in. Put the bezel around the gear shift. It's marked with FOC, as a lot of parts are. That means front of car. As an arrow, it is slightly different, so it does matter which way it goes. Push it down into place. Put our gear shift handle on. Put the clip back in. Then we'll use our 10 millimeter ratcheting hammer to engage the clip all the way. Once that's in, we'll pull the boot up. Now you put the bolts in the bottom of the console. Put the little cover back down there. Bolt in the front of the console. And put the little covers on. Plug in the glove box light. Slide the glove box in. Put all the bolts in it. Put the bezel around the radio. Plug in our cigarette lighter, traction control, and hazard switch. Snap it into place. Snap our defroster covers in. I'll put the A-pillar trim on. Bolt in the bottom of the dash and our hush panels. And our dash is complete. Looks much better. The old dash wasn't going to hurt anything other than aesthetics. So now we're either going to jump rope or put the molding back in the rear bumper. So you pull the plastic on the two-sided tape back, slide the end of it in. This is the front of the molding, slides underneath the bumper. And just work your way around to you get to the other side. The last foot or so you skip, slide the molding into the bumper, and then stick it on. Now we're going to remove the battery tender. I don't like the way it was installed. Somebody has clearly been here before. So we'll do it properly. We'll disconnect this mess that they have, which is just a wire wrapped around the battery cable and our little battery terminal insulator. Toss those in a pile. Pull the wires out. And I'll strip all this extra wire off that they had. Put some eyelets on here so we can bolt it in properly. 
crimp them over. And heat shrink them. So now I can install it like they should have. There's a lug right there underneath the fuse box. So we can use that for our power. And there's a ground bolted right there. So we can put it in there. We can leave the tender right next to the battery. We're going to put this in later. That's for when it sits for the summer months. And since I'm going to be driving it, there's no reason to expose that to the salt. So we'll just toss it in the trunk, leave it for later. Or maybe I'll go put it on the G8. So now we're going to do the intake gaskets. I'm not going to break this all down in detail because I'm sure there's probably 6 million different videos on how to do intake gaskets on grid amps. Because it's not like this is the first one that ever went bad. I've been doing these intake gaskets since, I don't know, about 1988 when they started these on 2.8 engines. And over the years, GM came up with different styles to try to fix their problem. Each one was a little better than the last. They used different torque specs, different style gaskets, and they finally found one that kind of works. It just became regular maintenance to do intake gaskets on these engines. So I'll just give you some of the shortcuts that I use. Everyone's always afraid of these engine mounts. It's really easy. Just jack up the engine, take off the four bolts, comes right out. We don't need to bother taking the tension off the belt. Just unbolt the tensioner, tension comes off. I don't drain the fuel system. I pull the injectors out, leave the fuel rod connected to the fuel lines, and just bungee cord it up to the side. We got our tool to pull our push rods out. I actually made one of these before this tool existed. That's how long I've been doing this. But the tool made it much easier. Mine was a crude design, and it was cheap. It saves a lot of time having to retorque all the rocker arms. And it seems everyone that retorques the rocker arms, the rocker arms end up pulling out of the head later on. So you end up having to helicoil those. So doing less work saves you a lot of work in the long run sometimes. We'll put our new intake on, bolt it down, and we'll even torque this one. Every once in a while I do it right. Put our free rail assembly in there, just still fully pressurized. Change our gaskets for our valve cover. We did change the distributor block off plate because those O-rings like to leak, they get old. We also put a thermostat in it. This one was bad, so when it was cold out, it would never warm up. Eventually, it was going to set a code, D0128, if you wanted to know. Pretty common. Thermostats are not really fun, so it's always good to do them when you have the intake off. Bolts are really easy to get to then. So now we just put everything back together. Put our alternator bracket on. Put our belt back on. Put our upper intake on, bolt it down. Run our wires over the top. Put the air box back on. Now we'll put our ignition system in. I always leave the wires for the front attached to it. Just unplug the wires for the back. Put some dielectric grease on our spark plug wires. Make it easier on the next guy. Route our spark plug wires. Some more dielectric grease. Bolt our engine mount in. And we're ready to change oil. Put the cap out. And we'll loosen up the drain plug. Spin it out of there. So you can tell when a Grand Am has low miles and is rust free because it still has this close out panel on the bottom and the thumb screws actually come off without using a pair of pliers, air chisel, torch, or all of the above. We'll take that cover off, give us access to the oil filter, spin the oil filter off, clean up our mess, slide our new filter on there, 
tighten it up, put our cover back up, slide it back into the slots, and put our thumb screws in. I did put some never sees on there to be nice to the next guy. So now I'll put the drain plug back in, tighten it up. Now we're really going to tighten it up and then we're going to send it to Jiffy Lube. Enjoy your 600 foot pounds. Now I'll put the oil back in it. Throw our cap back on. Break job time. We know how it's done. That easy. Again. Now onto the back. Ha ha! So just like, I don't know, every single Grand Am ever made, our rear deck speakers are pretty much blown out. So, I got a set of uh, high quality flea market speakers we're gonna throw in there. Now, I mean these things are 300 watts, so should be banging. So we'll release the rear seats and fold them down. Most of this job can be done without tools. Pull little Christmas trees out. Pull this panel down. Just kind of bend it and pull it out of there. Pull the seat pillar trim off. And lift up the package shelf. Those seat pillar trim clips like to break, so I take as few off as possible. So we're just gonna do one side, and then just fight the package shelf and work underneath it. We'll unplug our speakers and then unclip them. Slide them out of there. I'll do the one on the other side. We'll save our wires, turn this into a plug and play. We'll unclip the speaker from the speaker bracket. In the pile. I broke it. Here's our fancy new one. The speaker grill we don't need. In the pile. If you went to one of those high-class flea markets, these will fit right in. I'm poor. I can't even afford the high-class flea market. So since our cheap speaker doesn't clip in, we'll have to screw it in. There's already holes in the little bracket, so we'll just run screws into it. Second one's always easier. This one will break the little tabs off. We had two on the other one. We don't have to pretend like we're going to save that. Unclip our wires and cut them off. In the pile. In the pile. Screw a new one in. And now we can put the assemblies back on the rear deck. They slide in in the back, snap in in the front. Put the package shelf back down. I've done these enough to know that the short side goes to the sub. Red is positive, black is negative. Our flea market speakers have the same color, so just red to red, black to black. They don't make a direct replacement other than the OE speakers. And the OE speakers cost more per speaker than a pair of these. Actually, I think I'd buy like five pairs of these for one speaker. One. All right. Shrink those and put them in. So the wires that used to go to the tweeter just don't get used. Most people can't even tell the difference in the sound. And it definitely sounds better than rattling speakers. So we'll plug the wires in and clip them in. 
and plug the wires into the speaker. Now we can put our seat pillar trim in, route the seat belt in there, snap it in, put our weather stripping back up. I'll put the lower cover around the bottom of the package shelf. Just kind of bend it in there. Beats taking out those little seat pieces on the sides. Put Christmas trees in, fold our seats back up. So there you have it, my winter beater. Clean and ready to go. It's not going to stay clean for very long. It's going to be full of salt pretty soon in Chicago. I did put the exhaust back up. If you noticed earlier, the right side was hanging down kind of low. When it got hit, apparently it just slid out of its little brackets. So I just put the rubber grommet back on. Now it's back where it belongs. It's not a fancy car, but it'll definitely do its job. Our dash looks good. Our seat works. Our rear speakers don't rattle. Our intake gaskets aren't leaking, at least for another 60 or so miles. And there's no more brake pulsation. So after fixing all that, you can't even be sure it's really a Grand Am anymore. So since I'm sitting here in the driver's seat, I think it's time to call this build done. But there's only one way to be sure. It's time for everyone's favorite game, what's in my console. So let's find out what's in my console. Spare bolts, it's a good sign. We know what to do with them. What else is in here? Ah, we stopped over at Scott's Grand Am Emporium. We got an HVAC knob, that's the right color. And we got a reflector for our right rear door. So we'll throw these on as soon as we finish going through this console. I've been getting a little low lately. Seems I haven't offended enough people. I'll keep trying. What else is in here? Oh, got some spare change. Oh. Quite a bit of spare change. I don't mind finding that. So it turns out, I can't have nice things. Even if those nice things are only Grand Ams. I sold my winter beater, and I wasn't even trying. So I did have a lot of people in the comments telling me that this was only a thousand dollar car. Well, I got four thousand dollars that says one of us was wrong. And it's probably not the guy with the four thousand dollars in their hand. So sorry, thanks for playing. Next time, before you make uneducated comments, do a little research. Oh, wait. I think that's going to be filling up soon. That looks like it. So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see what becomes my next winter beater and if I can hang on to that. And see how full my cup gets. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. One of these things is not like the other. Yeah, I'm that old. Apparently whoever installed that wasn't. We'll save that. Because, well, those are gonna break. Seven thousand seven hundred seventy eight, seven thousand seven hundred seventy nine, seven thousand seven hundred and eighty, seven thousand seven hundred eighty one.